All right, guys, here is the filter that you're going to need. It is a PF2232. I use AC Delco, but whatever you use, just make sure it's the right one for your truck. Um, you're going to need an oil drain pan, which is still under the truck, so I can't show you what that looks like, but you saw it in the video. Um, and then you're going to need a 15 millimeter socket to get the drain plug out. Mine is aftermarket and it's a 16 millimeter, but if your truck is stock, it'll be 15. Um, and that's all. I hope this video helped somebody and I'll see you guys another day. Hi everybody. Today we are going to change the oil in my L5P Duramax, which I've tried to film a few times and every time I do, it kind of just becomes a pain and I give up. We're going to try not to give up today and try to power through. So this is not my stock drain plug. It is a magnetic drain plug. I don't remember the brand. I can look it up, but it's a 16 millimeter drain plug bolt. But I believe the stock one is a 15 millimeter. I will double check because I still have my stock one. This is a drain bolt. Oh goodness. I have mine pretty snug because I've had it end up loose by the time it's time it's time for an oil change. So it makes me nervous when that happens, so I have mine kind of loose. My truck is pretty hot. It's only been sitting for probably maybe 15 minutes since we got home. Because I think it drains the oil much better when it's that hot even though it burns me, which I don't really like. So we're just gonna get that out. Almost there we go. There's a little, well, there's not really any metal on the magnet, which is good. And I totally forgot a rag, which I'll have to go get, but we're gonna let this drain probably for an hour. I'm actually gonna go eat dinner while this drains because it takes forever. It'll just keep draining a lot. Um, so we're going to let that drain, then we're going to move over and pull this oil filter and let that area drain, and then we'll keep going on with the oil change, and I will hopefully not give up filming this one. Alright guys, we're back. We have some old socks that we're going to use as rags. Hmm, I don't know if I... I was going to bring a cup to put under that dripping. Um, where I took the drain bolt out, but I think I forgot my cup that I was going to put under it. And I'm too lazy to go get it, so we're just going to put the drain bolt back in. It's barely dripping, so it won't hurt it. So that's going back in there. hit you. Sorry guys. I'm gonna make that pretty tight because like I said I've had it ugh, loose when I've gone to change the oil and that's not a good feeling. So I err on the side of going a little bit tight. Get this step out of the way so we can work on the oil filter which is this blue thing right here. It's not too bad to work around. Pull this drain pan, drain pan over here. Hopefully we won't make too much of a mess. I don't remember what size um, filter wrench this is. It's kind of in between sizes. Ugh, let's see. There we go. I want to say it's like three and three quarters inches in diameter, but I don't remember. I can't really help you guys out with that one. There we go. Oh, 
Oh no. You guys fell over. Oh no. Alright. Hold on. My hands are dirty. I hope you guys can see. Let me pour camera. Let's try to. Oh, Alright. I think you guys can kind of see. This is not the easiest to do, which is why I usually give up filming. I figured since I have a GoPro to mess with, I might as well try to do a better job. Some people make a funnel around the filter to keep the oil from getting all over, but I don't really care because I get the truck sprayed down with oil right before winter anyway, so I really don't think this oil is going to hurt anything. And if I'm wrong, I'll just have to live with that. I don't know where there's the thing to drain the filter all right so now we're gonna let this drain for a while what is that oh it's just part of the part of the mount there so let's see we'll find the sock and clean this up over here so we can see if that leaks While that drains, we're going to go get, I don't know what we're going to do, actually, let's see here, I think my flashlights are going to die soon, so we'll just let this drain for now. Alrighty, so this is drained for a few minutes now, and it's still dripping out some, but we're going to clean up up here. I want to make sure that the rubber gasket from the oil filter you just took off is not stuck here because it'll leak if it is. So that looks good. We have our new filter here, which I filled up with oil. And let it soak so hopefully most of the oil will stay in because I have to flip it to put it on so I'm gonna move you guys a little bit because I need room to see what I'm doing hopefully I won't hit you and knock you over all right so just try to flip it kind of quick get it started on the oh we have it cross threaded we don't want that if it starts to feel like it shouldn't like it doesn't want to go back it off and try to thread it again. So that was actually really good. Not much of it leaked out at all, which is awesome. Put that on pretty snug. I feel like this filter gets tighter after you put it on, but it always makes me paranoid that it's going to vibrate off. So we'll give it a little extra to make sure. Oh no, you guys fell again. I'm not very good at this. All right, can you see? Yeah, you can kind of see. I mean, the lighting isn't great. There's the filter. It's a little bit dripping there. That's just from the oil that was in the, uh, like around the rubber gasket. So that should stop dripping very soon. But we'll keep an eye on it and make sure it does. And then everything else is still kind of dripping a little bit here. Clean that up a little. Clean that up. And that's already, oh no. Already pretty much done dripping. So that's good. Hold on here. Alright, so now we're adding the oil. I use Rotella T6 5W40, at least this time of year. It's November here. So, I have been using 1540 when it's not cold, so like probably April through October or so. If I can get 1540, I'll use that. That's what the manual calls for. But 
up until recently they didn't make 1540 in Rotella T6 so I just ran the 540 year round and the truck would eat a little bit of oil in the summer months but it wasn't bad not enough to add any oil anyway um, so it takes two and a half gallons usually I use a two and a half gallon jug but right now it's hard to find oil so I was only able to get the gallons which is fine so there's the first gallon Actually, it's not a full gallon. It's probably three quarters of a gallon. So this is where I, I use this jug to fill the oil filter before I put it on. So we'll let that go. We'll go grab another gallon. So we'll try not to mess this one up too bad. Here we go. So I used to add 11 quarts of oil. It would take like 10 and a half to perfectly put the oil up on the dip dipstick, but I was adding 11 because I was using 540, so it would be a little bit high for a little while, and eventually the truck would get rid of the extra oil. I don't know if it would eat it or what it would do, but eventually it wouldn't be too much oil. Now I use uh, hot shots stick gem illuminator so I use I do the two and a half gallons of oil and then I add whatever the amount I think it's like maybe 20 ounces of the stick gem illuminator and that brings it to the perfect amount of oil so I'm gonna measure that out all right guys, so we're gonna measure out and add the Stiction Eliminator, which since I've been using it, you just add one ounce per quart of oil. Is that right? No, I've got myself quite... No, it's two ounces per one quart of oil for maintenance. When you first start using it, they want you to use four ounces per one quart of oil. So two ounces per quart of oil, and it takes 10 quarts. So 20 ounces. I don't know if shaking it does anything, but we'll do it anyway. Let's see. These are out. This sign. So there's nine ounces. Another nine ounces. And I tried this. I don't remember what made me try this. I think I was just bored, so I bought it. And I have to say, I notice a difference. The main difference that I notice is the exhaust brake works more reliably. Before, I would turn my exhaust brake on and it wouldn't engage all the time or it would engage kind of randomly and ever since I started using this stuff as soon as I turn it on and ask for it to come on with the brake it um it comes on reliably every time I don't know how this really would have fixed anything with that but it was an instant difference 
as soon as I started using it. And so I imagine it's doing other good stuff, hopefully. Or maybe it's a waste of money. I don't know. But I do send oil analysis out to, I think it's called Blackstone Laboratories every so often. And I haven't had a bad, bad report yet, which is good. I don't remember if I sent one out with this additive in it or not. But I know I've had good reports, so I haven't really worried about it. So now we're going to pour this in to the truck. So let's see, my hands aren't too dirty. I'll just carry you guys over. Here we go. So we have two gallons of oil. Ooh, hold on, I gotta get you out of here. We got two gallons of oil in, and now we're gonna add the stick shell in later. And then we're gonna add the other half gallon of oil. And we're actually going to drain those other oil containers into this. So I'm going to shut you guys off so I can drain out the rest of the oil. Alright guys, I have a new gallon I opened up. I'm going to try to pour half of it into the truck. And not too much more than that. We'll see how that goes. to get a flashlight so I could see. Got a little more to go. So we'll do like that. Then we'll check it. Oh, we're getting close. Let's set it on a level surface here. about as close as we're going to get. So I just have to grab my other container. This is the last little bit of oil from those other two gallons that I was letting them drain into this cup. So I'll just tip that in there and let that drain. Shut you guys off. All right. So we have... Drain the oil, change the filter, refilled it up with oil. We're going to put this cap back on. You'll feel it kind of set down and then it'll screw on the rest of the way. There it goes. And it just goes so far, so that's all done. I opened the, that fill cap and I pulled the dipstick when I drained the oil because I think it drains quicker that way. So now we're gonna reset the oil light in the truck and we're gonna start the truck. Let it run for a few minutes. Well, not a few minutes, probably a minute. Shut it off and I'll check the oil. But first we'll reset this. I don't know if you guys can see too well. Hold on here. Camera. Here we go. Alright. Let's see. I hope you guys can see. Maybe I'll do like that. Now you should be able to see. So it says hood open and it's gonna make a whole bunch of noise. So we're gonna go back through everything. 
And this is a work truck, so yours might be different on what it does. So we're going to get to the oil life screen. We're going to press and hold. It says, are you sure that you want to reset? Go up to yes, click it. It should go to 100. So now it's all set. We'll go back to our mileage, which is not the best. And we'll start it. Everything sounds okay. We're going to let this run for a minute. We're going to go under it, make sure nothing's leaking. And then we're going to shut it off. And once the oil has time to settle, we'll check the oil level. Uh, some people check it before they start it, but I don't. Maybe if I was doing this for the first time on this truck, I would, but I don't bother checking the level till the oil's had time to circulate and then settle. So that's all there is to it. I'm going to do a, a quick clip on what you need to do this oil change, and then we're going to change the transmission filter.